Hey everybody. So today I wanted to talk about a um, topic that is pretty difficult to manage. Um, and it's something that I feel like a lot of people underestimate when they start transitioning or they kind of just overlook it like, oh, that doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm here to tell you my struggles with it and um, potentially, you know, trying to help somebody out in the future who is considering transitioning and um, doesn't know about these types of things. And so today I want to talk about the cost of transitioning. And, you know, you may assume, oh, okay, so it's going to cost a lot of money for hormones. Like, that's not a big deal. Um, there's, everybody's different, I'll say that, but there's so much more that goes into it. And I want to talk about my stuff specifically because, you know, I have experiences with it and I, I know what I've gained and what I've lost due to transitioning. And I feel like it's good to put that out there for people who are considering it or people who are just starting or, you know, maybe even people who are a year or two in like me, um, and just, um, giving you a heads up on things that I've dealt with. And so the first thing I want to talk about is money. Um, money involves a lot of things, but it does seem that transitioning is kind of a very expensive thing to do. Um, at least the way that I did it is, um, so there's, there's a few things that I want to talk about specifically hormones, the amount of money that you spend yearly on hormones can be pretty, pretty substantial. Um, I think currently my injections are like 50 a month and, um, my blockers are like 40 a month. So roughly like a hundred dollars every single month. So, you know, that may not seem like a lot, but $1,200 a year kind of adds up really fast. Um, and it's something that it's not going to just go away. Once you start, it's forever. Um, you definitely want to like maintain it and you want to have the funds available because if you run out, um, I would honestly advise not transitioning if you don't think that you can afford it because I've known trans girls who like, oh, well, can you spot me this much money for my hormones? It's like, why would you put yourself in a scenario where you could potentially like harm your body due to like not being able to afford your medication, you know, it's very stressful. And, um, I would almost recommend postponing until you get like a steady job or good insurance or whatever. And I have very good insurance and it covers a majority of my hormones. Um, and once I meet my deductible, it usually covers all of it. But anyway, so the next thing is surgeries. Surgeries can run <laughs> a lot. It, a lot of things are covered depending on your insurance and a lot of things aren't covered. So like for me, my breast augmentation and my bottom surgery are covered through my current insurance. Um, if I ever wanted like my trachea shaved or like a uh, facial feminization surgery, that stuff is not covered. Um, and a lot of people get things like Brazilian butt lift, um, stuff like that. And those generally are not covered by insurance. And so that can be really stressful um, if you feel like that's a source of your dysphoria and to feel like there's no way you could ever afford that type of surgery. It's, it's um, crippling, you know. And another one is just insurance in general. So affording insurance itself can often be pretty expensive. Um, and yes, they do help with other things like your surgeries and your hormones and stuff, but you still have to pay it, you know, <laughs> it's still another, another thing that you have to pay. Um, wardrobe, you know, it costs a lot of money to, um, begin transitioning where you have to out all your boy stuff and bring in new girl stuff or vice versa, depending on which way you're transitioning. Um, it can, it can cost money because wearing boy clothes often makes me dysphoric and makes me feel uncomfortable and huge and all these other things. And wearing girls clothes makes me feel comfortable in my body. And had I not been able to afford clothes, um, it would be very stressful for me. Um, so 
along with that makeup as you can see my makeup is terrible today because I just I'm lazy okay <laughs> that's the honest truth but to afford good makeup can range you know from $50 to $200 a month depending on what type of brand you buy and and where you get it from and all that kind of stuff it it can definitely put a put a hole in your wallet um I don't often buy name brand or like high brand you know makeup I tend to stay with like elf and stuff uh, it it does me justice so I haven't really fluctuated much with that I'd love to go into Sephora and be like okay what's my shade what kind of concealer you know give me the works give me all of it but then like I walk out with a $200 receipt and have to come back in a month to get it again. So I'll pass on that for now. Um, so those are the things that are money related. And I want to talk a little bit more about like other things that you have to sacrifice or that kind of cost you a little bit in the long run. Um, and another one is health. So for me, I'm relatively healthy and I, I haven't had any conditions due to transitioning, um, but there are people who can't transition or when they do transition, their health tends to, to kind of fade a little bit because it is hard on your body, um, depending on like injections, pills, whatever you take. Um, there's always precautions and always, you know, variables into like potentially harming yourself with that. Um, I take injections. So if I do too much, I run the risk of blood clots and things like that. And um, if I go too low, I can basically put myself in menopause. <laughs> so it's, it's something that takes a lot of, you know, energy and stress and, and it, a lot of management. Um, so the effects of medication is the first one. Um, you should have an endocrinologist. If you're doing hormone replacement therapy, without an endocrinologist, you're doing it wrong. And let me tell you, your levels um, need to be managed by someone who understands those and they need to be watched. You cannot just take this amount of estrogen and expect the same results that I have or the same results that someone else has because it varies depending on person to person. You know, like everybody's different. And for me, um, my dosage is, is managed through injections and it's a very small dose of injections, but it keeps me at a, a very high level um, that I'm able to maintain safely. Um, but you have to watch things like your liver functions, your kidney functions, um, you know, your blood clots, your, you know, heart stuff. Like it's, it's constantly something that you need to be aware of and once it gets regulated you can kind of lift up a little bit off of that but you should always always be checked at least like twice a year just to make sure your kidneys and your livers you know like all of that's functioning appropriately uh, because if not you run the risk of, of hurting yourself and another one is mental changes and so this is not exactly like a huge detriment, but it is something that I have noticed personally. Um, and that's, you know, the way you process things is different and it, it can be frustrating. Like I've never dated as a girl. And so learning to do so, your emotions are so much, you know, harder to manage. They're, they're so sporadic and so in your face, like things that before would make me just kind of like, you know, kind of sad. Eh, it kind of sucks. Now has me bawling in tears and, and feel like my life is over. You know, like it, it's the extremes are, are so wide, um, for females. And while I very much appreciate being able to feel those types of emotions, it can be really, really daunting at times when something as simple as like, you know, somebody said something to you or they talked about, you know, like your hair color or whatever, like something so little, um, I mean, it'll, it'll tear you down like that super fast. Um, and that's, that's something you have to understand will change whenever you start hormones. Um, surgery complications. So if you are like me and you feel the need to surgically transition, um, to medically do so, um, 
A, costs a lot of money, and B, there are risks involved. So with breast augmentation, they have something called capsular contractures. Um, and it basically like, instead of your breast falling into place, like a natural cis woman would, whenever she, you know, grows bigger breasts, they tend to lock up. So maybe one will drop and the other is like stuck here with scar tissue around it. And that's requires, you know, um, like another surgery to fix that. Um, it's, it's, it's expensive and it's, you know, stressful to your mental health. It, it causes you, it, it can cause you stress. It can cause you whatever, you know, like it's not just easy. It's not just, you know, pushed aside. It's not just this quick and whatever thing that you can do. Um, so the next thing is family and friends. Um, this is something personal to me and I feel like there are friends who no longer want to talk to me because of that. Um, maybe they liked me as a boy, but they don't like me as a girl. Um, obviously it's a little hard to talk about, but there are people who I was really, really close with. And it seems like I am more of a bothersome to them now, um, just from wanting to hang out and there are also people that you gain, you know, there are people who see the beauty in you being yourself and being happy. And, and that goes a long way when it comes to making friends and stuff. And when you do make friends like that, you make true friends, you make real friends. And I've definitely gained a lot of important people in my life that stand beside me through it, you know, so, um, be aware that that's something that will probably cost you. Um, family, I am no longer on speaking terms with my mother because she refers to me as an it or he and refuses to accept my pronouns and my name. Now, I've never been one to wear my transness on my sleeve and like, you know, shove my views down people's throats. But there's a point where it's for my safety and also for my health that, you know, I am appreciated and, and treated as such when I, I work so hard to present female and for somebody to just brush it off. Like, oh no, you're, you're still a boy. You'll always be a boy. You have to learn to, to cut people like that and, and just disappear from them because ultimately that's, it's your health that is affected, not theirs. Um, and so me personally, I've, I've lost a lot of family and friends because of transitioning. And had I known that, would I have not transitioned? Of course not. Like I would have gladly still transitioned because I'm, it's, it's my life and it's, it's my happiness. Um, no one else's and other people are expected to kind of transition with you, but you're never expected to change yourself for them, you know? So it's me and my mother got into an argument and she said I was being selfish. And I said, you're right. I am being selfish because I've lived 27 years of my life miserable. Um, and you know, accommodating everyone else. It's my turn to be happy and to, to be myself. And she just doesn't agree. So I, I am not on speaking terms with her because of that. And so I think that there's, there's a lot to transitioning. There's, you know, losing sleep and, and being stressed and feeling overwhelmed constantly, whether it be dysphoria or um, money or whatever, like it's always going to be something that is, is, on your shoulders, but in time you can get past it and you can, you know, grow stronger and be a better person, be a real person. Before I felt like I was just coasting through life and life is not for coasting. Life is for, you know, driving to wherever the heck you want to go. <laughs> I almost said a bad word, but I didn't. Um, yeah, it's, 
it's your life and it's no one else's no one can control you no one can tell you where when you can go um so now the benefit of transitioning it's very rewarding it it gives you true friends and it gives you peace of mind and and being comfortable in your own skin and uh, people see the real you you know whether they like it or not it is who you are and it's who you will always be it's not a facade it's it's your inner beauty coming out and I think that's the most rewarding thing from transitioning and even with all the costs and and stress and all that I would do it again in a heartbeat for sure so that's all for today um if you like this video please like and subscribe and um follow me whatever um i'm still trying to get donations for my breast augmentation um i did get a bill that came up and said that i owed three thousand dollars due before my date which is on the 13th so i have 10 days to come up with that much um it's gonna be very stressful um to meet that goal but I'm gonna try my best I did just get a second job so here's to hoping that I can accomplish my goals and um, yeah leave a comment I will gladly read them um, I read every single one of them and I will gladly reply back so anyway thanks for watching have a good day bye